Hello and welcome to Unwind Sessions where right after my shift I give the highlights of my workday and answer any questions that might have been asked at a previous session. My name is Juan, I am an English, Spanish, medical video remote consecutive interpreter with over four years of experience. Today is Monday, June 28th, 2021. I took a total of 30 sessions today. Uh, mix, like always, um, audio sessions and uh, video sessions. Today I took uh, um, uh, what's it called? Um, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> I took uh, rehab. Uh, physical training, <laughs> physical, uh, physical therapy, god damn, a physical therapy session that was a little bit over an hour long, but everything else was uh, pretty good, pretty straightforward. There were a couple of highlights today. Uh, the first highlight of the day is a new term, which is British ataxia. And I'm going to give you the definition from medlineplus.gov and uh, Friedrich ataxia is an inherited disease that damages your nervous system. The damage affects your spinal cord and uh, the nerves that control muscle movement in your arms and legs. And another thing, uh, oh, let me show you that word. So this is it, this is how you write it. Read, read. British, I'm sorry, British ataxia. So I hope that helps some of you. And uh, the next highlight is that um, the provider used dexterity. And like I was pretty sure that the Spanish translation was the same. So I went to s ahead. <laughs> And I said dexterity that, but I wasn't really happy with that, and I researched it before uh, doing this on wine session, and I actually found out that dexterity, the correct translation for dexterity is destreza, and that dexterity that is not recognized by the RAE, the Real Academia Española. So it is not recognized, it is not like a real Spanish word, but it is included in like the, um, um, I can't remember what it was, Pan-Hispanic or something like that, dictionary. So like it, like it could be used, but it's not officially recognized and people will understand it. But us that inter as interpreters and uh, translators, we are not allowed to use like things like that, right? Um, I should have said destreza, and I didn't. So, I, and I went ahead and I said dexteridad, and the lady didn't even uh, correct me or said she didn't understand. So, I'm guessing she understood because I was able to get on with the session, no questions asked or anything. Uh, but of course, now I know that I am not able to use dexteridad. Maybe I can use dexteridad with my friends. But in work, that is a no-no, uh, like I've already mentioned with some words before. So remember, dexterity, destreza, and that's more like a uh, mental note for me than for you guys. I'm pretty sure you guys will remember destreza. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was something that happened. And I actually dug in there, and it says that uh, there is like a, a Latin root, dexter which means, I can't remember what it means, something with uh, being able to use your left hand, so uh, having good ability or something like that. So it means kind of the same thing, but there is no word dexterity that in Spanish. Um, it is used, like I said, in um, Latin America, but it is not officially recognized or a real word, so watch out for that one, guys. I know I'm, I sure will. And uh, yeah, uh, today was not a good day for me. If you hadn't noticed, <laughs> I woke up at 6 a.m. in the morning today, so I'm not a morning person. I go to sleep at 12, I wake up at 8 or 7.30. So yeah, definitely not a good day for me. And then I had a very, very busy weekend, uh, so I didn't get that much sleep on the weekend. And plus I had to wake up early today. So honestly, I was falling asleep during the sessions. I had to 
uh, use a lot of repetitions because the just the words didn't stick. I mean, um, I, 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 I'd rather be sleeping right now. Let's just put it like that. <laughs> but I'm still here. Um, and on the last session, something happened. Like I had, um, I don't know if this is the correct term for it. I'm pretty sure it is. Like I had a dissociation. Like when, like I, I, I was looking at the screen and I was looking at the person that was talking to me, but then all of a sudden I, they didn't even know what I was looking at. Like I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, Google Deep Dream. You know how like some images just turn into other images all of a sudden, and then you don't even know what you're looking at. Well, yeah, that's what happened. Um, so I was sitting there looking at the lady, and I was listening to what she was saying, but. All of a sudden, uh, everything just got so bizarre and weird, and I didn't even know what I was looking at. It was just like, what? And then, of course, like my brain was trying to figure out what it was looking at. It didn't even listen to what was going on or what the person was saying. So uh, when my mind actually caught on, I like felt so out of place. I was like, what is going on? Like I definitely need to go to sleep. And. Um, but yeah, I was able to get through the session. Um, I didn't fall asleep today. Uh, maybe you can count falling asleep that little episode of dissociation that I had. But uh, I was still alert. I was still aware. Like if somebody would have yelled at me, I like emergency. I could have probably got up and started running. Right? It wasn't like so bad, but still not my best day. Uh, it wasn't like my worst day. I've had worse, but. Yeah, it was pretty, 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 pretty bad. Um, I didn't like it today. I didn't like my performance or anything. Uh, not my usual self. So I hope that uh, I can get some sleep tonight and I can be back 100% tomorrow. And uh, it was not just the sleep. Like today, I just didn't feel like working today. Like honestly, um, I just didn't want to interpret today and I had the sleep. So it was two strikes for me. <laughs> So can you imagine though, like, oh, I don't feel like going to work today. Um, and then like every day that you don't feel good, you can just keep work and not go to work. That'd be pretty cool. But then like some people will never go to work, right? And some people still don't. Uh, so yeah, I don't think like it seems like it seems like a good idea right now because I really want to be sleeping and not working. But of course, after giving it a little bit of thought, then that seems like a very horrible idea, right? No one would work, I think. And they'll be like, oh, I don't feel like doing anything today. I'll skip work. And then, like, you know, everything would get delayed and things would go bad. So, yeah, I think we shouldn't implement that. So, uh, yeah, and another thing is that if you only work on your good days, then, like, you will never get much done, right? Like. I don't know, um, like I do feel pretty good most of the days, but yeah, like today there's every once in a while a bad day comes along and just knocks you off your feet, right? So uh, one saying that I've also heard is uh, work hard on your bad days so your good days will be like really easy. I don't, I don't know if I, made, if I made that up or if I heard it, but yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I, I know that maybe I'm not my usual, no, I am not my usual self today because I would rather be sleeping today. I already said that many times, so yeah, I'm gonna give you like my tips uh, for today to stay awake. Um, whenever at the end of the session they give us, they give us like this uh, period to write notes about the sessions or just to take a little break. So I just got up and I just started jumping. I tried to elevate my heart rate of course, I drank my usual coffee, I drank my tea, and caffeine is good, but don't overdo it, because if you overdo it, you're going to be going to the bathroom a lot, and, well, yeah, I mean, you're not going to be falling asleep, and you're going to be in the bathroom half the time, so what good is that, right? So, another thing that I used today is that I would actually pinch myself, like, whenever I knew that uh, uh, it was just getting so bad, I pinched myself. And uh, that usually, that it seemed to help a little bit, not as much as I thought. But yeah, like pain really worked to keep me awake just a little bit. And uh, also like try not to put yourself in a comfortable position. So 
get un uncomfortable, stand up. Like I said, um, half of the time, half of my shift, I'm standing up. The other um, half, I'm sitting down in this chair. So I tried to um, stand up more than I usually do. But of course, I was tired. And then my legs were just like telling me that I needed to sit down. So it was hard. And the last tip uh, that I did today is like, to remember to stay awake, right? Uh, and that's really like the most difficult uh, that I found today because when that dissociation episode happened, uh, I realized that I wasn't doing a good job in remembering to stay awake. Luckily, it was like the last session and like the last two utterances. So um, not a horrible day, but not a good day. Like, uh, not, not to, uh, what was that, Chernobyl? Uh, not so good, not so good. not terrible, not great. <laughs> so yeah, that was my day today. Not terrible, but not great. And uh, yeah, another thing that I have to mention today is that there was a breach in my office. Just like it sounds. So uh, I was taking my break, and uh, during we get two 15-minute breaks uh, every two hours. So I was at my first 15 minute break and I always leave the door unlocked. I close it, but I unlock, I leave, it's unlocked so that I can just walk in, right? No, um, I don't miss any time going in. And I mean, it's fine because it's only me and my grandma here. So that's not a problem. I mean, and my grandma knows that she cannot go into my office um, and she doesn't. And that's not a problem, but the problem is that my little cousins were here from the US and I was on my break and of course i leave the office because if i stay in the office during my break i feel like i didn't take a break at all right um it feels better if i just go like even in the living room or into my room or anywhere uh it's just uh just changing the the views and where i sit or just uh, looking at my cell phone whatever it just takes me out of the interpretation and then it just resets me for the next block right so um of course, I mean, I'm not going to use it as that excuse that, oh, of course, I didn't sleep right, but no, because no, it wasn't that. No, honestly, it wasn't that. It was the fact that I'm used to leaving the door unlocked. So all of a sudden, um, I was taking my break. I was enjoying my break. And then I hear voices coming from my office. Now, that sounded very strange because, of course, nobody's in my office, right? It's only just me. And I heard the voices, and I went to go see, and then I walked in, and my little cousins, they were right in front of the camera, uh, just exactly what they tell you not to do when they hire you for the company that I work for, right? So, of course, I got, like, I panicked. I didn't know what to do, and I told them, hey, get out of here. You're not supposed to be in here. I could get fired, and blah, 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 right? Maybe and I overreacted, maybe not. But yeah, I just yelled at him to get out of my office and of course like man, I've never seen him run so fast. Um, I felt bad for yelling at him, of course it was my fault. I didn't lock the office and I didn't tell them that they couldn't go in there. But I mean, they have been here before and of course my grandma always tells them not to go in there and uh, everybody knows that they're not supposed to go in here. But still, I didn't lock the door, right? At the end, it was my fault and my fault only, and uh, I still have to apologize for them, so you know I'm going to apologize to them after getting out of here. And uh, they were just curious, right? They just wanted to see what my work office seemed like, so... Yeah, so... That was bad, so... And that was like that the first two hours, and then I didn't sleep, and uh, so... Yeah, not, not, not a very good day today. Uh, so yeah, I messed up. I let them get into my office, and, which I, I'm supposed to guard, right? I'm not supposed to let anyone in there, so big F up for me. And uh, now I just realized that I have to get into the habit of just locking the door, even if it's just me and my grandma. And that was something that I used to do at the other house, and I used to live alone over there. Uh, but I... Uh, I had a Carnitas business running over there at that house. So, of course, and like my office was independent from the house. So, um, I, I always locked the door because I, like there were always people there, you know. Uh, somebody could have just been curious and locked in, walked into my office like it happened today. 
Uh, but other over there, there were people that I probably didn't know, right? So of course uh, that was more reason to lock it. And over here, of course, like um, even if there are people that I know and there are people that, of course, they're not. I mean, what are some little girls gonna do, right? They're gonna look at the uh, uh, the computer screen from my break, right? And they're gonna spill all the secrets of the company. Of course, they're not gonna do that. But I mean, it was a big mess up on my part and I'm just gonna get into the habit of uh, locking the door right even if it takes me just 30 more seconds to actually go ahead and open the door to get into my office that is something that I'm gonna have to get used to again and um, I wanna I wanted to mention this uh, because I mean if you are VRI or if you are working for a company which tells you that you have to keep people outside of your office. I mean, don't take it lightly because you never know. Um, today I was lucky, tomorrow I might not be so lucky if uh, the higher ups would have seen this. Uh, that could be termination uh, or it could just uh, be a strike uh, in my file, you know? Both things are bad and uh, of course I don't want any of those things to happen. And if I'm mentioning this to you guys, uh, it's because uh, um, I think we all need a reminder uh, and sometimes maybe we're not doing it and we just think uh, nothing is gonna happen luckily well nothing happened today uh, maybe somebody finds out they'll probably say something to me uh, I don't know uh, nothing has been said so far yet I hope nothing happens so yeah uh, just a reminder for everyone that is working in this type of situation like don't take it lightly guys, I mean, uh, just take every precaution to keep people outside of your office because, I mean, if I lost this job, I, I, I don't know what I would do with my life. I mean, this is the only thing that's keeping my life propped up right now. If I lose this job, I, I don't know what's going to happen with my life. So this is a very important job to me and of course, I'm pretty sure if you're working as an interpreter, is most likely a very uh, so VRI is probably a really important job for you guys so just take care guys don't be dumb like me and don't leave your office unlocked and get into the habit of always locking your uh, offices right uh, and I took this as a wake-up call like literal and uh, uh, figuratively right in both senses because I really need some waking up today and that didn't wake me up enough I guess so yeah, I'm um, just here to remind you guys, lock your office, to avoid any breaches, if your company um, it demands that of you, right? So yeah, don't take any chances guys. And that is going to be pretty much it for me today. Uh, please leave your questions on the comments and I will answer some of them on the next session. I'll be here every Monday through Friday after work. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe if you like the video and have not done so for more content. And don't forget to share. Happy interpreting. Goodbye.